Hi, my name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and professional traveler. Today we're going to talk about how to choose between the Puma and the Bison Western Mountaineering sleeping bags. How do you choose between the Puma and the Western Mountaineering sleeping bags? Well, that's why I'm here to help you out. But before I do that, if you wouldn't mind hitting the subscribe button, that helps me bring this channel to you. And also, please leave a comment and let me know how I'm doing and what else I can cover for you. And send me an email, I'd love to hear from you. So let's get right into it. Why would you choose the Puma versus the Bison sleeping bags? Well, if you're watching this video, no doubt you're considering going to some seriously cold places. Svalbard, uh, Northern Russia, Alaska, Antarctica, Greenland, somewhere really, really cold, or even Yellowstone in the winter. It gets minus 45 there. It can be severe. So my experience on both of these bags has been super, super great. And I'm going to get into the technical details first, and then I'll talk about my experiences. So let me grab my handy dandy notes. Between the two sleeping bags, the Puma has nine inches of measured certified loft versus the Bison has 10 inches of loft. Now, I'm going to do my own loft measurement just for you using this ruler, very scientific, and another ruler to measure. So what I'm going to do is put the, let's see, right where the chest is and hopefully, yeah, squish this down. And that's about uh, eight and a half. Well, actually, if I didn't squish it, that's about, nine inches aloft, so that's actually pretty accurate. The bison, however, if I can keep this level, goes down to, oh, it's almost 11 inches of loft. So that's quite substantial. As you can see in the foot area, again, the bison is substantially larger and thicker. So let's see if I can mush this down. It has almost 12 inches of loft in the foot area versus, 10 inches of loft in the foot area on the Puma. So as you're, as you're going along, you might say, hey, why don't I just get the bison? Well, there are some other factors to consider. First, the weight. The bison weighs four pounds and 10 ounces. I mean, it's like oh, carrying a bison around versus the Puma is three pounds, 12 ounces. So sure, you get an extra almost 20 degrees of warmth, but you have to carry an, an entire pound extra on your back or hauling in your sled. That's not a minor consideration. The rating on the Puma officially is 25 degrees. The rating on the Bison is minus 40, or let's see, it's minus 25, yeah, and minus 40 degrees, and those are all both in Fahrenheit. Now, there are 42 ounces of fill in the bison versus 30, what is it, 37 ounces of fill in the Puma. So again, a substantial amount of extra fill in here. They both use what's called 850 or 850 plus down from ethically sourced, sourced goose farms in northern Europe. They don't get out there and boom, shoot the geese down. Instead, these companies actually collect the goose down in, it's like a chicken coop, but a goose coop. So they're not blowing away geese to get this stuff. So if that's something that you're concerned about, don't worry, mustard mountaineering isn't there massacring geese for Christmas dinner for your sleeping. Uh, the, the shoulder girth between the two sleeping bags is substantially the same. The girth on both the Puma and the Bison is rated on the shoulders at 64 inches. So let me measure that and see. Now that's circumference, so I'm going to measure across. And when it's totally laying flat, that's about 31 inches versus the Puma, when I measure across, it's about 28 inches. So the Puma is definitely a smaller bag, so if you are super huge or you need something extra. Now, that, that girth measurement, meaning all the way around, it doesn't mean much. So this, this width here is you know, 30, 31, give or take, and again, 27. If I put the two feet of the bags together, these are both six foot six bags. I'm trying to be as scientific as possible. 
you can see that the bison is just a little bit longer here. So the bison measures out at about seven feet on the dot versus the puma. This measures out at um, six foot ten. So two inches shorter, but considering the substantial size of the bison, that's not a surprise. The foot box on both of these is 39 inches, so I'll measure that as well. All right, I'll put both of these here so you can see them. All right, so we'll measure across the bottom. And that's about 17 inches versus uh, about 15 and a half. So again, the bison is definitely a larger bag, but again, it goes down to minus 40 degrees. However, if this is something you really care about, they're both made in the USA. You can see the little flag there, hopefully. So if you're from the USA and you want to buy USA, they're made in San Jose, California. So that can be a factor if you're really concerned about that. Now, if you notice on these bags, the zipper actually kind of disappears below the bag, and that's a particular design. The zipper wants to be a little bit below your hip line on both of these bags. And in fact, the zipper on the bison is actually almost near the floor. And you can see that there. The Puma zipper is almost on the floor as well. So they're very similar in design there too. Now both bags have a double baffle system and everything. So I'm gonna turn the lights so you can see that. Okay, so I'm now going to unzip the bags and show you what they look like fully opened up. And now, by the way, I've, I've got these items out here before I forget. Uh, if you decide to get the Puma bag over the bison, you can always extend the temperature with a vapor barrier liner or VBL hop sack from Western Mountaineering. If you get their booties, that's huge. And if you want to carry the extra nine ounces, the Thermolite reactor from sea to summit can make a big difference in your experience too. So there are ways to extend the temperature rating of the Puma. Neither of these bags have a continuous baffle system, so you can't flap them like the, uh, the Megalite or the, uh, the the antelope so the, that's something to consider if you need to expand the range if also i highly highly recommend if you're going out into extremely cold conditions get the booties just stuff them in the bottom of your sleeping bag because it will make all the difference in your camping experience so now i'm going to unzip the bags and show you what they look side by side fully open Okay, and then this one. All right, so there you go. So the two bags side by side so you can see what they look like inside. Now you might say, hey, that Puma doesn't look as filled, it looks a little limp. Well, it's just the fact that the bison is bigger and it's f more full of down. So I'm six foot zero, and I'm now going to lay in the bag. So you can see I will put my feet at the very bottom, and then you can see where my head is. And my neck, my neck is right at the baffle position, so I can completely pull this over, okay? And you can see I can spread my hands out completely while still not touching the ends of the bag. Now compare that to the Puma. All right. I will put my feet all the way at the base of the bag. Make sure it's all stretched out. Okay, again, I can stretch my hands out here. I can completely stretch my hands out here. My neck arrives at the baffle and the hood fits just fine there. So from that function, they're very similar. Okay, the next consideration is the neck system. And you'll see that the Velcro system between the Puma and the Bison are exactly the same. 
they have a double facing velcro on both so they have a lot of attachment power so when you you're loaded with a bunch of junk in the sleeping bags you can actually fit and I will get you a good close-up of that and this is how this works you can see these two and they stick to each other like crazy and there you go and that's how you create the continuous baffle system on your sleeping bag okay now I'm going to get in each of the sleeping bags and zip them up hopefully I won't sweat out and show you what the experience is actually like to be in these. And I always zip my zippers from the outside just because that's a habit I've gotten into because of the zipper pulls. Now it's 65 degrees in here and I'm already hot. I haven't even zipped up the bag yet and it's already too hot for me so I'm not gonna last very long in this thing but I'll do my best. All right. Okay, so there you go. And I'll give you another angle of zipping the bag up and I'll show you how it's like to be in here. All right, now I'm already sweating and you can see they both have this uh, Velcro deal to keep the zipper a little bit under control. And I'm going to place the neck baffle together you're starting to sweat very sexy now getting the neck baffle velcro can be a little bit annoying because it's in a tight space and it tends to want to close on itself but once you get it all hooked up you will be happy that you have that it's a huge feature on making these bags work properly okay all right, to get the neck baffle fully attached there. There we go, good enough. The neck baffle is now attached. Now we'll get in here and I will draw the neck cord completely around my neck. <laughs> Oof. All right, and now I will close the hood up completely and this is how I sleep in polar conditions. <laughs> with just my mouth and face up. Now we'll lay down. I still have plenty of room in my feet. Actually, probably a good six inches, so there's plenty of space there. So I can load this up with water bottles and things. It's very, very roomy. <laughs> I am on fire, folks. Okay. Ugh. So as you see, it's a bit of a process to get into this bag, but if you're going places that require a minus 40 degree bag, you're just going to have to deal with that. And that's just, you don't go out there for comfort, and that's for sure. So now let me get into the Puma bag, and we'll show you what that is like. It's a similar experience, except you won't immediately catch on fire, but very soon I will overheat. And that's no surprise there. Again, I'm six foot zero, 165 pounds. All right. All right, I'll zip this up. Now this is easier to zip up because it doesn't have as much fill and that's just nature of the business there. Okay. I still have plenty of space again. I can close the neck baffle and completely choke myself out and then I can close the hood baffle and get this down to how I would be sleeping on Denali in a storm so if you're claustrophobic you're in trouble there you go all right let me get out of this ah. <laughs> all right and again when I'm laying here there is less room beside my hands, so there isn't as much room for water bottles and such. So it's, it's a little bit smaller, even though the girth rating is the same. And again, getting in and out of these bags is a bit of an effort. So, oh. <laughs> 
you can see I'm sweaty already. So there you go. The differences in the feeling of these bags is that the bison, the moment I just simply laid down, I was already broiling. The puma, I wasn't broiling as quick, but it builds up fairly fast. Now what I will do is I will turn the feet of these bags inside out for you so you can look at the difference here. Okay, versus the bison. If I can even get it in, inverted at all. Okay, and there you go. So you can see the foot areas of the bison bag and the puma bag. Again, a little bit smaller. There you go. But they do have this heavier fabric at the very bottom. So when you're stuffing extra gear in or whatever, this uh, 2.1 fabric versus the lighter fabric, this is a very nice touch in that this fabric is a little bit heavier. You can't see it on the screen, but the fabric coming up to the bottom of the Puma, this is just a little bit heavier, at least it feels like that to me. However, the Bison, the fabric comes up to here, and then you can actually see a coloration difference. So this fabric is just a little bit heavier, but on the Bison, the fabric is substantially heavier at the bottom. So if you need to stuff a lot of gear in the bottom, the bison is definitely a better choice. Now granted again, it's a minus 40 bag, but you can actually see, I don't know if you can see on the camera, the coloration difference between the regular fabric and the bottom versus this. This feels just like a heavier fabric on the bottom versus here, and uh, it's hard to tell, but the fabric on the bison is substantially heavier in the foot area, so that is another consideration as well. Now, as far as choosing the different sleeping bags, let me go into the points that I wrote down in my notes. The length, if you're anywhere near six feet, get the six foot six sleeping bag because you'll be able to jam your water bottles, your clothing, all your extra gear that you want to use in the morning. The fit of these bags, the Bison is definitely bigger than the Puma. In girth, if you're very big in the chest or thicker, you're going to want to consider the Bison, but I mean, it's a substantially bigger bag. I've had this uh, Puma loaded with, uh, I don't know, five plus water bottles and Denali all sorts of craziness there so that wasn't that big a factor the closure system on both the bison and the puma is the same the experience the lowest temperature i've taken the bison was probably at least minus 60 in antarctica during a raging storm i actually had to get my vapor barrier liner out and put it into that bag so it was at least minus 60 I, I mean, maybe minus 70, I, I don't know. I've never been like, ooh, I've got into that bag and I was still cold, so I had to use the vapor barrier liner. I have used the Puma down to minus 45 degrees. That was verified. I didn't have the hot sack or the thermal reactor. I definitely wish I did. So if it's going to be minus 45, add the hot sack, which you use inside your sleeping bag, not on the outside, that's key or a thermoreactor adds nine ounces, but it saves you quite a bit of money. Uh, there is a microfiber version of the Puma. Only get that if you really think you want to shave the weight, but you still want the warmth, because if you're going to places that are this cold, you are going to get that area around your chest wet. Uh, there was a, a, one of the polar explorers from Colorado he tends to only do expeditions in Antarctic in late November through December, and he has used the Puma or a Puma type bag. So that you know that that's something to consider. If I would have brought the Puma bag starting on November 1st in Antarctica, I would have been in real trouble. It was would not have been adequate. So three weeks is a huge difference in a location like that. So one of the good cheats is to either use a vapor barrier liner or the thermal light from Sea to Summit, and that can add five degrees, maybe seven. This can add 15 degrees to your bag. They're not pleasant to sleep in, but that is a good cheat. Now they both have double draft tubes, so I never ever get cold air 
coming from the side and that full down collar 850 down and plenty of junk space is really nice so if you're going places where you're sure it's never going to get down to you know minus 40 i would actually go with the puma simply because i don't want to carry the extra weight of the bison and generally it's too hot if you're going someplace where the bottom could fall out and get to minus 50 and 60 and you do some other things to keep yourself warm then definitely you got to get the bison the puma will not be adequate so if you're going to Aconcagua, uh, Everest, Antarctica, maybe Greenland if it's really late in the season, so that or early in the season, whichever way, that's what I would do. So my experience has been minus 60 or lower in the bison. Uh, it was pretty chilly, but I was sick, so the vapor barrier liner made the difference. The Puma got down to minus 45. I was pretty cool, but I still slept, so it wasn't too bad. Uh, that's just the nature of the business. So now I'm going to show you how big or how small the Puma and the Bison compressed down in the Event XL sack. This is the 30 liter. So what I'm going to do is do a quick time lapse and then do the actual time that it takes me to stuff these in and give you some measurements. All right, ready and Puma go. Right. Two minutes, twenty seconds, and the dimensions are um, 16 inches down and then the diameter is going to be the same. It's about 13 inches. So this bag ends up being 16 inches tall for the Puma. You could probably squish it down a few more, but uh, we'll skip that part. So now I'll show you how long it takes to get it out of the bag. Ready? Go! So now I'm going to take this out of the bag and we'll do a time lapse to show you how long it takes to remove the Puma. Ready? Go! So 24 seconds for the Puma. Now I'm going to show you how long it takes to get the Bison in the Cetus Summit XL bag. It's a 30 liter bag. Ready? Go! And 220, 220. With the bison in the sack, I will now do a time lapse of how to take this out. And go. 26 seconds. I will put links below to the bison bag, the puma bag, the vapor barrier liner, the thermal reactor by Sea to Summit, and wherever they are, the down booties. I hope this video has helped you decide between the bison bag and the puma, and just leave a message and let me know how I'm doing, and I'll try and answer them. My name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and professional traveler. Please like comment and subscribe to my channel, and also support me on Venmo, PayPal, and Patreon. Thank you very much for watching.